I'm very excited about it, Barbara, because I believe that this Congress is really going to build on the one in 2006, and I think my big hopes for it is that everybody is going to feel um, that they're one big unified body. Well, I'd like to find um, out how I could play some sort of a role in the future of both the wider church and more specifically within the Oblate congregation, looking for a way forward. That would be my uh, key aim, really. So I suppose it would be to re-engage something with the mission of the Oblates. We gather partners in mission to share in the mission of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate and the dream of St. Eugene de Masno. As we move into this Congress, memories of past Congresses and intervening years continue to strengthen us and challenge us. We prepare ourselves for sharing together the journey the I'd like to extend a word of welcome to each and every one of you. We've come here today, we've come together from different parts of the world and different parts of our province. And we come together to take another step on our journey. I wish to extend a very sincere welcome to all of you, Oblates and our partners. On behalf of all of us here, I welcome in a special way our former Oblates and those who are joining us during these days from overseas. I wish to welcome in a special way Jean King, our Vicar General. Jean is no stranger to us in the province from his, in his position as Vicar General, he has been a constant source of inspiration and support to us on our journey, especially over the last three years. But at this moment, I also want to acknowledge it as a time of pain for many of us in the province. Following the recent publication of the Rhine Report in Ireland into allegations of abuse to those in our care in our reformatory in Dangan, we will remember these people in a special way in our prayer. Today represents, this gathering represents another step on our journey together. I think of it as moments of new beginnings. And as we begin these days together, I'm conscious of the words of the gospel yesterday when Jesus promised his disciples, his partners, promises us to be with us always on our journey. Thank you. Now, what I'm proposing to do is to introduce three conversations. Introduce three conversations, three people into the conversation of this session, but also of your lives, <laughs> what you're doing at home uh, and in your ministry. And the three people that I want to introduce are St. Eugene de Masman, Pope John the 23rd, and St. Paul. And my gamble is this. I can't get away from the gamble. My gamble is this, that you will gain in your capacity to recognize and name what you experience in this whole process of rebounding what you are and what you have to contribute to this project of refunding and to owning your own gift.
The whole thing goes back to the, the importance of preaching the gospel in the reality where you are, which is what Tom was talking about, questioning the gospel from your own reality. Huh? Boff says, your head thinks where your feet stand. Huh? The parish in Goiania has got over 50 communities. Each of these communities has their own organization, has got their own leader, leadership, have got their own catechesi, have got their own sacrament, sacraments. They, they celebrate their own liturgies, not all as masses, but their liturgies. Each one has their own ministers, <coughs> which is part of the, the conclusions from the last meeting of the Latin American bishops in Aparecida. The prior, one of the priorities of, of the Aparecida meeting is that the church belongs to the lay people. The, the, the lay people are the people, the future. They are the people that are, their responsibility is church, eh? organized church, live the church. Eh? It eliminates or it diminishes our preoccupation with vocations because the vocation is not just priestly vocation or religious vocation, it's, it's Christian vocation, as Jean, Jean was saying, Christ, the, the vocation to be a Christian. Huh? In these conferences, there was a, a, a manner of procedure uh, uh, assumed in the first one, meddling. And it was simply, uh, you could resume it in three words, the their procedure. It was to see, it was to judge, and it was to act. So uh, the, the conference of meddling, when you read it, you can see that the reading of the Latin American situation uh, is very well done. It's, it's, it's a picture of what was happening in the lives of the Latin American people. And uh, I suppose one word that could resume what they saw was a, a society in which the majority were excluded from participation in the fruits of the earth and participation in decision-making processes which affected their daily lives. So they hadn't a voice and they hadn't a place. The land of Latin America is saturated with blood of people who gave, them, who gave their lives for the cause of the life of other people. And from this blood, as we used to say in the old church, from the blood of these martyrs has arisen the, in the unforgettable memory that this blood must not be spilt in vain.